Hi, this is Rod Saunders from Jew and Greek. I recently came across a video of YouTuber Keith Thompson proving that free will is a pagan man-made doctrine. It's only three minutes long, but it's provoked me to make a considerably longer rebuttal video. For those of you who don't know, Keith is a Calvinist who runs a website called Reformed Apologetics Ministries and often goes by the name Keith Truth. He's really into John MacArthur and other Reformed theologians. So let's listen to Keith presenting his premise. The idea that we are free, we're autonomous, um, what we do hasn't been preordained, these ideas are not Christian, they're not in the Bible anywhere. So according to Keith, free will isn't in the Bible anywhere. Well, if it doesn't come from the Bible, where did so many Christians get this idea? In fact, they come from paganism, Greek paganism. In his book, Love, Freedom, and Evil, Thaddeus J. Williams has shown that these beliefs originate with the pagan philosophers. And what he does is he compares the teachings of these pagans to modern anti-reformed theologians who teach free will. Let me give some examples. When acting is up to us, so is not acting. And when no is up to us, so is yes. This is taught by the Arminian Norman Geisler, quote, Minimally, free will is the ability to do otherwise. Again, Aristotle wrote, Hence, if acting when it is fine is up to us, then not acting when it is shameful is also up to us. Likewise, the open theist Gregory Boyd teaches, quote, The power to decide between alternatives must ultimately lie within ourselves. And so very clearly, these modern Arminians, these modern open theists, uh, teach this pagan philosophy. Open theism means that God not only doesn't predetermine our choices, he doesn't even know what choices we'll make, while Arminians believe in free will but still affirm God's foreknowledge. So, Keith concludes his premise with the claim that free will comes from pagan Greek philosophers. And in this video, he basically takes quotes from Greek philosophers and juxtaposes those quotes with quotes from Arminians who believe in free will. Now, if you're not up to speed on the whole Calvinism versus Arminianism debate, in a nutshell, Calvinists believe that God predetermines that some will be saved and others won't, and that our choice to accept Jesus and receive salvation is predetermined. Arminians believe in free will and hold to the view that salvation is offered to everybody who chooses to believe on Jesus and receive eternal life. Although God has foreknowledge of our choices, he doesn't predetermine those choices. I plan on doing a lengthy discussion of Calvinism in the future, but for now I'm going to focus on what Keith is saying in this video. In the next clip, Keith offers a quote from Aristotle and a similar quote from Dr. Norman Geisler. The pagan Epictetus wrote, Zeus gave you this faculty of impulse to act and not act, of will to get and will to avoid. Roman Geisler teaches the same thing, quote, One of the things God has given his good creatures was a good power called free will. Lastly, the pagan Cicero taught, The gods only give us the mere faculty of reason. If we have any, the use or abuse of it depends entirely on ourselves. Roman Geisler teaches the same thing, quote, God made the fact of freedom. We are responsible for the acts of freedom. The fact of freedom is good, even though some acts of freedom are evil. God is the cause of the former. I really like the fact that Keith is bringing Greek philosophy into this discussion because it fits into the whole theme of my website and YouTube channel, Jew and Greek. From the Jews, we get revelation and theology. And from the Greeks, we get empirical knowledge and philosophy. The vast majority of the discussion of free will has taken place in the world of philosophy rather than the world of theology. So I'm going to go into some philosophy here in my rebuttal. Now Keith is trying to make the argument here that because Norman Geisler said something similar to what Aristotle said over two millennia ago, Geisler's comment was drawn from Aristotle and is therefore pagan. That's ridiculous. Just because a non-Christian said it doesn't make it wrong. I mean, even a broken clock is right twice a day. 
What if Adolf Hitler says the sky is blue? Does that mean it's not? We don't determine whether or not a teaching is Christian based on who else said it, but by whether or not it's supported by Scripture. And the concept of free will is seen throughout the Word of God, even if the expression free will isn't in the Bible. Remember, the word Trinity isn't found in the Bible either, but the doctrine of the Trinity is considered an essential doctrine of the Christian faith. No doubt Norman Geisler took some of his phraseology from Aristotle, but that doesn't mean that, he, that the concept of free will originated with Aristotle. In the Garden of Eden, God told Adam and Eve not to eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Now let me ask you, could they have chosen to obey God? If your answer is yes, then you believe in free will, because free will by definition means that we have the ability to choose between different possible courses of action. This is referred to as the principle of alternate possibilities. If you believe that they didn't have a choice and that they could only choose to disobey, then you believe in determinism, which means that the course of action and the end result are predetermined. In Genesis 4, 7, God told Cain that he would be accepted if he did the right thing, but if not, he would fall into sin. Cain was given a choice. He could have chosen not to resent his brother and just offer a more acceptable sacrifice, but he chose a different path. In the book of Deuteronomy, God told the children of Israel, I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, choose life. Deuteronomy 30, 19. Here, God not only presented Israel with a choice, but told them which choice to make. In John 3.16, Jesus said, Whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. That means that some choose to believe and others choose not to believe. Unless you think that those who believe or who don't believe had no choice in the matter, you believe in free will. This isn't Aristotle saying this, it's the Word of God. Here's something to ponder. The Apostle Paul had some experience with the Greeks. He went into the Oropagus in Athens and preached Jesus. And in that sermon he said, For in him we live and move and have our being, as certain also of your own poets have said. For we are also his offspring. Acts 17.28 So Paul was quoting Greek pagans here and using that to present biblical truth. Now, according to Keith's logic, Paul was taking his theology from pagans, but that's just not the case. Paul was using pagan verbiage to communicate biblical truth, the same thing that Dr. Norman Geisler was doing. Notice that Dr. Geisler didn't say Zeus or the gods. Another thing to consider is the logical fallacy of guilt by association that Keith is trying to use here. Since pagan philosophers believed in free will, and since Arminians, like Norman Geisler, are saying essentially the same thing, that means that Arminians are teaching a pagan concept. Well, let's explore that a bit. One of the leading proponents of determinism in our day is the atheist neuroscientist and philosopher Sam Harris. Are we then to conclude that Keith is espousing an atheistic concept? In fact, determinism originated with the pre-Socratic Greek philosophers two centuries before Socrates, Plato, and Aristotle. Should we then conclude that determinism, or the Calvinistic view of predestination, is a pagan concept? No, I don't think we should, because in all fairness, our Reformed brethren are basing their views on Scripture, and even though I don't agree with their views, I'm not going to employ any guilt by association tactics in countering those views. Just so you know, Keith isn't really misrepresenting the Calvinist view here. Here's what the highly respected Reformed theologian John Piper said in a recent video. Has God predetermined every tiny detail in the universe, such as dust particles in the air, and then I should add here, including all our besetting sins? Yes. So, every time your cat coughs up a furball, it was predetermined or predestined by God from the beginning. Every single snowflake that falls from the sky was predetermined. Every soldier who has ever died in battle was predestined to do so. Every time you clear your throat, kick the dog, yell at your kids, or eat a banana, all 
predestined. Is that what we're supposed to take away from what the Bible says about God's sovereignty? Or would it maybe make more sense to conclude that God is the ultimate authority, but he gives us a certain amount of freedom to choose? Just enough to hold us accountable for our choices and actions, and that in his omniscience, he has foreknowledge of what decisions we'll make. Now, I could go way down a philosophical and theological rabbit trail here and talk about fatalism, compatibilism, reductionism, stoicism, materialism, and idealism, automatons, the difference between the brain and the mind, naturalism versus supernaturalism, but I'll go into all of that in future videos. For now, suffice it to say that this pathetic attempt to prove that free will is a non-Christian pagan belief is laughable. Hold to determinism if you want to, Keith, but don't try to brand Arminianism as pagan. That dog won't hunt. Thanks for watching.